when G hash when it is in a period where it has fifty one percent hashing power and somebody gets a gets control of the servers, you know, they can double spend. But since it's decentralized, you know, there are no servers like that with P two pool. So Yeah. And it's what a lot of people on on the Bitcoin uh, subreddit were encouraging uh, miners. They're encouraging miners to point their uh, rigs towards that because it's um, if it can get if it can get a significant amount of the hashing power, it's um, a pretty substantial solution to the centralization problem. Yeah, and um, uh, this mining mining group called Petamine um, is considering joining joining p2 pool and they have over a thousand terahash per second of hashing power so that's a lot but man they're if they're if they barely only reached uh one percent of total hashing power man they've got a long way to go though to to really be any kind of competition against ghash io or any real like uh good protection against 51 percent attack they got a long way yeah I think um, I think the problem is is that the the miners who are using G hashes they just um, maybe they just don't like change but also I think they just trust G hash. Yeah, yeah. They've supposedly um, they have pretty good customer service. They're really super reliable. Um, it's profitable. A lot of miners say it's the most profitable pool to be a part of. And also Ghash is um, the other half of them or whatever is is CEX.io, mm. which um, is an exchange, and you can actually buy and sell um, mining power from Ghash. You can exchange that on the CEX.io uh, yeah. exchange. So that's what they like about it, apparently. Right, but I mean, um, what we see happen when uh, when Ghash gets like when they start even getting close to 51% is um, people get scared and they start selling. So, uh, you know, if, if the trend continues and they keep getting more hashing power and they, you know, maybe they get like 60% hashing power and then people get really scared and the price goes down several hundred dollars. Maybe then miners will start leaving. uh, Cause, cause they'll understand that it's a result of G hash becoming too powerful. Uh huh. And then maybe they'll start pointing their rigs at a P2 pool. Yeah, yeah, maybe. But, like, that same situation, you you have to, uh, you're relying on on the miners themselves to make the right choice for the the greater good of the Bitcoin ecosystem. And, like, I I sympathize with the people who worry a lot about uh, 51% attack because even though it's not um, that likely and it wouldn't even be that effective like yeah the whole uh, part of the appeal of bitcoin is that it's decentralized and there is no yeah there's no it's trustless you don't have to rely on anyone else to 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 be a good um to be a a good actor in the economy but if if it's centralized now with ghash io like it it's 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 like you're buying into a currency that is run by by a centralized entity, right? And that takes away so much appeal of it, right? And that is that really is a huge problem. Um, and you know, I I respect the you know the enormity of that problem, um, but I think the reaction to it is just way over exaggerated. Mm-hmm. Uh, pe- people are saying that oh, well now you know this is why we need government to regulate bitcoin it's a market failure it's a failure of the free market as a whole you know bitcoin's dead doomed and to die forever um what they don't realize is that at the same time they're coming up with solutions short-term solutions um granted but they're coming up with solutions and um it's and they're the free market, you know. The free market isn't confined to just the movement of money and companies and things. It's you know individuals working together to solve problems. And that's what's happening. So it's definitely not a failure, free market. Yeah, yeah. And um, anyone who says it, it, this is a this is a failure, like failure is a strong word. That's a strong word to say that yeah. this whole situation is a failure. I mean, it's kind of you're kind of delusional if you think that it's actually a failure. Yeah, like I've seen people say that. Well, this is a proof that the free market doesn't work because. These miners are acting in their self-interest to, um, 
by joining this really great mining pool, but it's harming the whole uh, Bitcoin ecosystem as a whole. But, you know, at the same time, these people are like, they, like, P2 pool sprung up, like, overnight, I think, apparently. And um, they're, like, convincing miners to pull their hashing power out of Ghash. And uh, they're all acting in their own self-interest because their self-interest is to preserve Bitcoin's uh, decentralized nature. And so that's what they're doing. Um, yeah, they so, see the greater I, good, right? Yeah. So I, And I wrote an article about this saying, you know, they're contradicting themselves because um, they're saying that these miners are acting in their self-interest and it's a failure of the free market. But at the same time, they're acting in their self-interest and solving yeah. the problem. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think it's this reaction is way over exaggerated, but I like, I'm not trying to diminish the, the, the problem of the, of yeah. mining centralization because yeah, yeah. it, it is, is a huge problem. flaw. Yeah. It is a huge flaw in Bitcoin. Um, but then also there is a possibility that maybe Bitcoin is just not the greatest idea. You know, yeah, that's also yeah, yeah. not a failure of the free market. Yeah. You know, um, you know, the failure of one digital currency doesn't mean that the concept of decentralized uh, digital money is flawed as a whole. Right. It just means this one project was a bad idea. It means the mining, the mining uh, formula, the way it has evolved over five years has become a problem. And, you know, when Satoshi originally um, wrote the white paper for Bitcoin and started imagining this decentralized currency, he didn't anticipate the rise of ASICs and large yeah. mining pools full of ASICs. Like, that's that's a relatively new development, and yes, it's a problem now, but it doesn't mean the idea was itself was flawed. Just the implementation yeah. and how it's evolved over time has become a problem. And there's cryptocurrencies out there who, who uh, that solve this particular mining problem. Myriad Coin um, has has what is it four or five different um, algorithms for mining, and it doesn't let. It's five, I think, and it doesn't let e any one of them uh, go over twenty percent of the of the whole hashing power of the Myriad Coin network. So fifty one percent is impossible. And um, you know who knows? Maybe that'll be the new Bitcoin five years yeah, from now because like, you can't do a fifty one percent attack on it. I think I think what people need to realize is that yeah, you know, um, there's there's a pretty uh, definite distinction between. Um, between the economics behind cryptocurrency and the technical aspects of the different currencies. Yes. Um, because cryptocurrency as an idea, as an economic concept, it's, it's logically sound and um, it, f it fits pretty well within the already established uh, monetary theory. Mm. Um, so, yeah, we might... Bitcoin might fail. I mean, the... The first projects that come from a new idea usually do fail, but that doesn't yeah. mean that cryptocurrency as a whole is a flawed um, is a flawed economic concept. And I think that's what people need to realize. Like they're looking at Bitcoin, and they're seeing this flaw in um, in the uh, proof of work uh, yeah. hashing uh, algorithm, and um, and they're saying. Well, Bitcoin won't work, so this probably means that no cryptocurrency won't work. And that's the real no. problem. Yeah. Yeah. All these cryptocurrencies, like, a lot of them work a lot differently than Bitcoin. A lot of them use proof of stake instead of proof of work. Some of them use a hybrid of proof of work and proof of stake, a pure coin, for example. Um, so, yeah, I, it, there's, there's a ton of cryptocurrencies out there. Cryptocurrencies in general is is a fantastic invention. It's so it's so interesting and it opens up so many different possibilities um, in the economy that weren't available to people before. But we just we just need to pick one that'll have lasting yep. long-term viability that is not vulnerable to this theoretical 51% attack that is a a flaw in the proof of work algorithm. Yep. I'm still I'm still confident, though, that um, the market will make it maybe not impossible, but so difficult that it's not even worth implementing a 51% attack just because of the reaction the community uh, has every single time Ghash gets close. 
Yeah. I, I think I think it's a definite um, operation of the market. Uh, these you know these people they react, they come up with all these solutions, uh, short term solutions to take power away from Ghash, um, and they're also they're also trying to get uh, they're trying to contact the Bitcoin Foundation uh, who work on uh, Bitcoin Core to uh, to modify it to solve the uh, mining problem. So yeah, yeah, I don't think we should rule Bitcoin out just yet because of yeah. this one problem because it's definitely fixable. You know, it's not an inherent flaw. Um, it's definitely fixable, and um, I think the like the, I think the market is proving that um, it can do a pretty good job of fixing itself.